5517 Northwest 23rd Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, April 19th, 1995. I was going to be late to class and it was all the fault of my girlfriend who'd surprised me with homemade peanut butter and Hershey Kiss cookies. The homemade creations were amazing. Being so enamored with the gift and her smile, I'd allowed the time to get away from me. My first clue of my impending tardiness was the startling lack of sound, no students scurrying here and there. Looking at my watch, I discovered I had mere seconds until the bell rang, so I thanked her again and sprinted down the hall. As I crossed the threshold, the bell sounded. I looked at my watch. 9 a.m. My buddies looked over at me, heckled me a bit, but then noticed the plastic container with cookies and changed their tune. Don't even think about it, I laughed. With my briefcase on my lap, filling in for a desk, I opened my spiral notebook and prepared to take notes. It was 9.02. At that very moment, the left wall of our classroom fiercely shook, causing the glass in the windows to violently rattle. A millisecond later, an invisible wave of pressure coursed over our heads through the rafters, causing the ceiling to buckle and moan. Tiny flecks of plaster floated down like snowflakes. Wham! The wall on the right side of the room now violently shook, making us wonder if the windows would explode. We just sat there, staring at the walls, the ceiling, and each other in silence. Several students sprang to their feet, ran to the windows, and opened the blinds to see if our classroom had been struck by a vehicle off Northwest 23rd Street. The baffled professor asked, You guys see anything out there? One of my friends exclaimed, No, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. We all wondered what the heck had happened. There was no internet back then, no Wi-Fi for cell phones. In fact, we didn't have cell phones, so we just shrugged our shoulders and continued on with the class. Emerging out into the hallway, I noticed a large gathering of students outside the administration office. Some of the young ladies covered their mouths with their hands. The guys stood quietly, shaking their heads. What could it be? Stepping up to the window, I peered into the office and noticed that a television had been pulled up. There, on the TV screen, was a large building that looked as if a giant monster had stepped on it. Half of the building was gone, and we could clearly see about seven stories of open internal office spaces. Loose papers by the thousands floated in the wind amidst large spiraling clouds of billowing black and gray smoke. Dozens of vehicles engulfed in flames surrounded this terrifying spectacle. Then I heard someone exclaim, That's downtown. Several of us sprinted outside and looked toward the heart of Oklahoma City. There on the horizon were the same spiraling, angry black plumes of smoke. This was real. Back in the hallway, I called out, Hey guys, you can see the smoke from the parking lot. Several students ran outside, but I remained by the television, transfixed by the horrifying images. Then came the words that would set the course of my next 25 years. One of the reporters, live at the scene of carnage, looked into the camera and with a trembling voice pleaded, We need all medical personnel downtown now. All medical personnel, please come downtown now. A couple of the students had seen combat in the Persian Gulf during Operation Desert Storm, so they loaded up with a friend who was an RN. Off they went downtown to face the unknown, and there I stood with nothing to give. My country, my city was in need, and I had nothing to contribute. Deep within me was a great revulsion to this fact. Right then and there, staring at the horrific images on the screen, taking in the holocaust that Timothy McVeigh had created, I made a decision. Never again would I have nothing to offer my community in an emergency. I would never stand idly by while others suffered. I soon took a course at OSU's city campus, Emergency Medical Technician, EMT. That was for me. The images of medics running toward danger, death, destruction, seared into my brain. That was me. I was going to help. Thus began my career in emergency medicine. On a quiet day that was shattered by violence, Timothy McVeigh had snuffed out 168 precious lives and wounded many more. His act of violence that was meant to demoralize a nation spurred me to action. For the next 25 years, I would be instrumental in saving thousands of lives. In addition, I would teach dozens and dozens of medics, nurses, interns, resident doctors, and others who would likewise go on to save lives. In a way, that shockwave of April 19, 1995 continues to go on and on as more and more lives are saved by those I helped to save and those I've trained to do the same.